Welcome to New Beginning Church and our Friday Night Faith Fight. Father, I thank you for everyone here in attendance in this service and everyone viewing on Facebook. Give us hearing ears so that we can hear the voice of God plainly. Let me see clearer than I've ever saw and know better than I've ever known. Let me utter and say what you would say if you had the stage in the pulpit tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say the things you say. The things, the things you, you say. say. Look at your other neighbor, even if you have to look at that other neighbor by faith, and they ain't there yet, and say to them, the things you say. The, the things you say. say. We are preaching from the series, Being Accurate in Faith, the first two messages, and I'm teaching this the way God taught me faith. So if you've heard me preach before, you probably want to hear some stuff you've heard before, but first thing I had to learn for faith to become accurate was God's not mad at me. My first two messages, I focused on that. The third message I learned in my faith walk that you don't wait till trouble comes to try to develop faith. A lot of us, we wait till we hear the word cancer and then it's too late. Mm -hmm. Last week I ministered on the why are your angels standing in an unemployment line? This week I'm going to talk about the things you say. Turn to Mark the 11th chapter, starting with the 22nd verse, reading through verse 26 if I can. We're going to make an attempt at that. Mark 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Now all of the people I've sat under and different versions of the Bible I've looked at, they will tell you that that phrase, have faith in God, means have the God kind of faith. Mm -hmm. But what Pastor Todd wants you to see in that is it's not a suggestion. God's not saying it would be good for you if you would have faith. Jesus is looking at them apostles and telling them, have faith in God. It's a command. Mm -hmm. It's not a suggestion. He had just come out of the church house having a very bad day. Better take his watch off before we tear it up. You can ask Joe about that. There was a drawer full of watches when Joe lived with me. When I minister, I ruin them. But it's not a suggestion. It's a command. Jesus had, if you go back into the 10th chapter, Jesus had just come out of the church and he found it in disarray. He turned over the tables of the money changers in the church and come out and it says uh, Jesus if happily he might find fruit thereon he was hungry and saw a fig tree mm -hmm. got up to the fig tree and it did not have fruit and Jesus looks at the fig tree and tells it no man will eat fruit of you hereafter forever and the disciples they heard that but what we don't understand in Mark the 11th chapter is it does two things it tells you how to get out of your life what you do not want in it you speak to the mountain until it be removed be cast into the sea and don't doubt in your heart but believe that those things that you say comes to pass you have whatsoever you saith that's getting rid of what you do not want but that's also where my text is let me slow down and read it I get excited Mark drink water calm down I actually try to teach on Fridays but it's as close as I ever come to teach and Jesus said have faith in God for verily I say unto you that whosoever, everybody say, I'm a whosoever. I'm, I'm a whosoever. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a whosoever. You're a whosoever. Whosoever means me. Brother Hagin used to say it this way, the Bible is God speaking to me. Everybody say that. The Bible is God speaking, speaking to me. To me. 
Yes. And he said, whosoever, that's anybody, that's the person you don't want to come to your church, the family that you was glad the day that their daddy got mad and they went to the first church down the road and you was happy about it, I came tonight to tell you that those people you don't like, we are in a divided nation right now. You want to know what Satan is attempting to do in our lives and in our homes? Just turn on your local news right now and watch the division in our government. Yes. Yep. Come on. That's, that's what right. he's intending on bringing into our churches. But we've got to realize that faith works for any and everybody that's a whosoever. If they are a whosoever, they are qualified for the life of faith. That's it. There's a spirit of division out there. We, we need to deal with it in our churches and get a hold of it. Just because you don't like that person don't mean they need to go somewhere else or you need to go somewhere else. That's right. You can't tell me in our cities that God intended on us having this many churches. You got the first church, the second church, yeah. Church of God, Church of God in Christ. In our area, we've got the New Salem Old Regular Baptist and the New Salem Old Regular Baptist to tell you that Indian Bottom Association of the Old Regular Baptist, they worldly. Come on. <laughs> It's division in the church. Yeah. Satan does not want us to be accurate in faith, but what he fears more than anything is for us as a group to become accurate in the things of God. There's no use us getting in this book and proclaiming faith if we don't find accuracy in it. This is them getting rid of what you do not want. Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, not wish, not hope that it's coming tomorrow, not looking for it down the road, not these little weak prayers that we end, but if it be your will, Lord, his will was strayed and stained and splashed in blood all through the city of Jerusalem that his will and testament could be written and left for me to read. Amen. I can tell all of you all, if my dad had left a will they ain't nobody going to tell me what to do with anything in that book that my dad says is mine. I'm the only heir in the family. It's my stuff. I'll do. I'll sell it. I'll paint it. I'll refurbish it. I'll tear it down. It's mine. And it's the same way in the kingdom of God. My elder brother Jesus, he paid the debts I cannot pay. He bled in the way I cannot bleed. He died and got up in a way that I can't die and I can't rise again. But what I am required to do is look at that will and testament and say, he said it's mine. You ain't going to talk me out of it. Amen. That's good. He willed that I have it. Uh, my question to you, church, is why do you not have it? Why have you not laid hold of God's holy word? And why is there stuff and things in your life uh, that you don't want there? Yes. Come on, you mail me a bag of copperheads this evening, I ain't receiving that. That's right. Mm -mm. Now, you give me a sack full of money, or heck, give me a sack full of cheeseburgers. I'm going to take the money and I'm going to take the cheeseburgers because if you brought me a sack, and that kind of tells me you wanted me to have it. Yes. But we've never took God's Word that seriously, and we've never been that thorough with it. We don't, we don't even know what to believe. He said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be removed. You want to know why it ain't gone? You've not told it to go. You yeah. want to know why you're dealing with the same thing that you was dealing with 10 years ago? You've not told it to get out of your yeah. life. Resist the devil and he will flee from Amen. you. How do you resist him? You tell him to go. Amen. 
See, when Jesus taught this, he wasn't standing in no city. He's standing at the foot of a great big mountain, and he's saying, whichever one of you all says to this mountain, be removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. But, this is a part we think we preach, but we don't preach it. Everybody's big on it. This could get controversial, but I've never cared about controversy. Everybody's big on speaking God's word. I am. You have to say God, but how many people do we know that is speaking God's word and saying God's word and not getting results? How many people do we know that has been sick that has quoted and talked and spoke healing verses and we know good and well they never received healing? A lot of them died and went on to glory. Yeah. If that's the case, if they were speaking his word, why didn't it work? Well, you know, as preachers, especially you, you're about to step into ministry in a way you ain't never been in it. You've got, you've got to get ready for them kind of questions. So my granny, they'll tell you, she was the best saint of God, and I don't doubt it. She lived cleaner than anybody. And all she did was pray all day, and she said that word and said that word, and she died, brother. Why? Yep. People get asked that stuff. Well, I'm going to show you. This is what we do not do. Tell the mountain to be removed. Don't doubt in their heart. But shall believe that those things which he saith. My title tonight is those things you say. Mm -hmm. You're not just supposed to believe God's word, but what this is telling you is you are to believe those things that you say. Yeah. That's what it says. Believe those things that you say shall come to pass. I'm supposed to be a person that absolutely believes that if Todd says it, it's the absolute truth. I've been famous for that. In bad ways and good ways. I was the man known at Walmart that you don't bring me your infant baby. <laughs> Unless you read. Because I've had them bring them to me. Brother Todd, ain't this the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? No! <laughs> no. Yes. It's bald-headed. It's squished. Fat rolls everywhere. It ain't got no teeth, no hair. It is the epitome of what every one of us is trying to not look like. <laughs> that don't mean you know. Now there's some that are beautiful, but now there's some that's going to be beautiful, but now they ain't right now. It's exactly how many of you are trying to not be bald? How many of you are trying to keep all your teeth? How many of you don't want big fat rolls rolling over? That's each and every one of us. No! That's not the most beautiful thing I ever. Bring it to me in a few months after it's grown a little, and I'll be able to tell you it's pretty then. Ah, oh, Brother Todd, you shouldn't do that. That's harsh. No, I, 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 I should do it because it's what I believe. And if I answer you, I believe what I say. I, I don't doubt my words because I'll offend you with them. Come on. That's the truth. You might giggle, but you know it's the truth. So that baby, we, we all try to not look that way. Yeah. <laughs> We're all trying to not look that way. But we'll lie. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it will be. Let it grow a little. <laughs> It was wrote right on the top of one of my files of where I worked. Brutally honest. Don't ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had executives come into Walmart to come over to my meat room, shake my hand, and they've got a new 
whatever. I like saying it sold it from Brother Copeland Hoppadoodle. It's a new Hoppadoodle's policy we're doing on the shelves. So what do you think about that, Brother Todd? And when they'd say that to Todd, all the management team would go, oh Lord, I had the sinners ready to cut it about a hundred in a day. They are ready to talk in tongues. So this man said, Todd, what he thought of this new policy. And you know what my answer was? It's the stupidest, dumbest thing I've ever ever seen. I said, you guys make something simple hard. And I had a patent speech. This is retail. You ever want to manage successfully in retail, you, you can write this down. Retail is get it in the back door. Got to get the product in your building. Get it in the back door, put it on the shelf, get it through a registry. Three steps. You gotta have it in your back door, you gotta have it on the shelf, and it's gotta go through a register. If you can get it in the back door, through a shelf, and through a register, you'll make money. It's true. But these Walmart guys have put make that three step process into a 25 step process. That's right. That's right. Off the truck, you've gotta scan it that it's come off the truck. It's on a pallet, you gotta scan that pallet in. Take it off the pallet, put it on the shelf. You got to scan it into that shelf. And you ain't made it out of the stock room yet, and you already in five or six steps. And then when you take it to the sales floor, you scan it at the spot it's allotted on that shelf, and then you scan it at a spot up on top. So they come and ask me, what do you think of this? I said, it's obvious. The dude that come up with this idea has never stopped a grocery shelf. He's sitting in an office chewing on a cigar, making up stuff just so he can be the boss. That's it. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I've answered that a lot of times in my morning. Why? Sometimes the only integrity I have is my mouth. Sometimes. I mean, I've had bad days where I bust up stuff, shove things over, drive, get mad, and give gas harder than I should have. But, but my words. I believe those things that I say shall come to pass. Good or bad, it, it don't say. Just speak, believe that when you speak God's word, it'll come to pass. It actually says for you to believe that everything you say, it comes to pass. And I came tonight to, not just to tell you about God's word. It will come to pass if you're speaking his word. But all that doubt, fear, unbelief, death, and negativity, when you speak that, it will come to past two, you are today what you spoke yesterday. Yes. Amen. Even in the coma story, walking around Walmart, my buddy Brad Bartley said, look at that stupid was card. All the end caps on Walmart has got a price that it used to be what it was and what it is now. And they're big on them. I couldn't see the was card. My diabetes was messing with my eyes. I didn't know it. But I'm walking around that store. Moses' eyes didn't grow down. Mine won't grow down. Sure. And they're here. But they're also trying to rip me. Well, you're in your 40s now, Todd. It's time for you to get contacts and glasses. And I, I was mad at some of them because they didn't go to the church I went to. So I looked at them and said, to, especially to Philip Powell, I said, Philip, good friend, fishing buddy. I said, the day Todd Amberg, he goes into the hospital, Philip, you will pack my big hind end in the hospital. My eyes ain't going bad because I'm 40 year old. I'm healed. But when I go, you'll have to pack me in there. I ain't going to no doctor. I come under Ruth Kilburn. Ruth didn't go to the doctor. I'm not going to the doctor either. And on October the 15th, 2012, instead of mom's in Winchester, Kentucky, and instead of calling an ambulance to come and get me, she calls me up, pal. <laughs> yeah. You 
You want to understand the power of words? Yes. Uh, Philip's at the hazard store that day managing that store. We are in Winchester, and my mom calls and says, something's wrong with Todd, Philip. You need to come down here. And Walmart almost didn't let him leave. What, what's she calling you for? I'll tell you why she called him. I said it, and I said it, and I said it, and I thought I was talking healing and the power of my faith, but I just kept saying the day they take me in, Philip, you'll carry me in. Well, about two and a half hours later, he gets to Winchester to the hospital, and I have memories of Philip Powell carrying me into the emergency room at UK Hospital. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's fun to tell about. I told Old Blue to come home, and now Old Blue's parked in my driveway. It's fun to hear the story of Miss Nitro. Mm -hmm. Good story. Every time us fellas would go on a revival meeting and get in a motel, I'd get this Mark the 11th chapter out, and I'd show them. Boys, I'm believing, and I'd take my laptop. They've got a build-a-boat feature on Nitro's website. You can build your own boat. I build Miss Nitro. She's pretty blue and white. Had a blue stripe like an S through the seats. She had soft water latches. And I know some of them boys don't fish. Now, Scott, he'd sit down there wanting to look, but everybody getting tired of looking at uh, Todd's drawing that crazy boat again, and he's standing up in the motel again saying, Miss Nitro, my address is 175 Woodpin Creek Road. You need to be parked there. That's a good story. It is. Mm -hmm. I sowed a seed one day. Actually, I, I paid the last payment on a pastor's boat. Sometimes I tell that part, sometimes I don't. But I wrote the check, paid his final boat payment, and God said, now do something for yourself. I had $17 in my pocket, and I said, well, the only thing I want, I want this nitro. So I'm going to get my family, and I told Mom and Dad, I said, we're going to go look at boats. I feel like it's time for me to buy a boat. We'll start at the Nitro dealership in London, and I planned on going all through Somerset and through Tennessee and looking at all the dealerships. And We walk in the Nitro dealership, and they're taking plastic off of a boat. And I look, and it's got Miss Nitro's blue stripe on it. <laughs> I thought, well... I'm going to go look at the latches if it's got salt water latches on it. And she did. And I'm helping that fella uncover it. And he said, are you interested in them boats? I said, let me see if the seats have got a little blue stripe in them. And he said, yeah, they do. And I said, that's them salt water latches? He said, no, they don't put the, uh, he said, they don't put these on the Z6. He said, but that's them. Hey, come here, is this some salt water latches? And the guy says, yes. And he said, well, are you interested in it? I said, that boat belongs to me. She, her name's Miss Nitro. Get the motor on her, get her all hooked up. I'm coming after her. And then he asked me, what do you want to pay down on it? <laughs> I not <thought> that yet. <laughs> I've been talking to her in a motel for a long time, but I had no thought. Uh-oh, I had 17 bucks. And out of my mouth come, I'll bring you $7,000 Wednesday. Here's one of them, you're like, oh, my God, say that. <laughs> come on, you can get something inside of you so deep and so strong that it just pops out. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He told us a fountain could not bring forth sweet water and bitter water at the same time. You're going to have to turn one spigot off to get the other one. But I told him, I'll bring you $7,000 Wednesday. Now, my dad's been around so long. As we're walking out of that dealership, he says, Do you have $7,000? I said, I believe I have it. <laughs> I said, but you either going to have to pay the gas home or feed us. <laughs> so I got $17 in my pocket. <laughs> 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 
Well, that was on like a Wednesday or Thursday. It comes to the next Wednesday. I ain't got paid you at work. I ain't preaching no work. I spent my $17 on that first trip. I get up and tell mom and dad, let's go. We're going to go get my boat. Dad said, you got your 7000 yet? I said, I believe I received it. <laughs> I said, but you're going to have to pay the gas down there. <laughs> we get over here at Hyman, where the Arby's is, and I'm, I'm buying gas. And a boy comes to the hood of my top, crying. He said, Todd, and I had, he said, whatever, don't hold me too time, I'm pitiful on it. He said, eight, nine years ago, you bought me a boat. I told you I'd pay you back. He said, I did you wrong. He said, here's $4,000 that I owe you. And he started crying. He said, here's 3,500 interest. <laughs> I finished filling my towel up. I come to the car and Dad said, what that boy give you? He give me $7,500. I got my 7000 and now I'm going to buy one of them $500 boat covers. <laughs> Well, that don't sound like much, but how many of you have got your $7,000 down payment with 500 extra to get the fancy cover? That's because you lying too much, telling people their yard looks good when it don't, their child's beautiful when it ain't. You do not, your spirit man does not believe those things that you say shall come to pass. Come on, that's what it said for you to believe. Yep. You believe that those things you say shall come to pass. Well, Brother Todd, how do you should you think Peter wasn't talking to me that day? What are you gonna do now? You ain't got seven thousand dollars. Now you said it to your daddy. He's gonna know this faith stuff ain't real. He's gonna that's going through your head, but I, I'll tell you a mystery. You can have doubt in your head and an abundance of faith in your heart. It's your words that determine. Good results are bad. Amen. Amen. If you're not speaking God's word, you are not going to be accurate in faith. And if you don't believe your words, faith ain't going to work. What he told you was believe that when you say it, it comes to pass. I've got to believe that just because I said it, it's coming to pass. Yes. Yes. I remember what it's like. And I thank God for Brother Scotty. He's always old. He called me as I'm leaving the house. Is the 7000 in your hand yet? I said, no, but I'm driving to the dealership. Somewhere between here and the dealership, I'll have my 7000 Well, I get in the truck. Scotty calls. Have you got your 7000 yet? I said, I got 7500 And his faith was good. I'm already sitting in Miss Nitro waiting on you. He sends me a picture of his Myself, uh, sitting in my boat. <laughs> That's the kind of buddies you want to have. Yeah, he believed in it so much, yeah. he went to the dealership before me. Amen. Yeah. He's the one when I was in the coma That's right. and got on my Amen. Facebook. And if you was out there talking about uh, Brother Todd's about to die, we need to pray for him. Scotty asked you to take that off my Facebook or he's going to remove you from my Facebook. And then he sent you a list of positive confessions. This is what Todd's believing. If you're going to post anything on his wall, you post on his wall what he said. Yes. Yeah. Come on. That's right. We, we, we've heard those prayers our whole life. Uh, Lord, help brother so-and-so. And then they try to be humble. If it be in thy will. That ain't humility. That's arrogance. Mm -hmm. 
When you ask God to heal the sick and then you add to it, if it be your will, what you are saying is, Lord, heal the sick. But I don't believe a thing you said in that book about healing. I don't have no confidence in it. I don't know if you'll do it or not. If you do, you do, Lord. Or if you don't, you don't. Come on. Yep. That means you better be repeated. That's right. That's right. God promised you healing. He didn't say it might come. It, it comes for some and not others. He said unequivocally, without any doubt, that with his stripes, yes. not I'm going to be, not I will be, I am healed. I am. Yes. But when you add, if it be thy will to it, I know it makes you sound spiritual amongst the brethren and it makes you sound humble, but what you are actually doing is what I said. You are standing there saying, I don't know if you can trust in that book or That's not. Right. That's right. Come on. That's right. You learn some things along the way. You learn that your buddy will sit in a boat waiting for you when you ain't got no money. But your other buddy will pack your big hind in through the emergency room at UK Hospital because you said it and said it and said it. Amen. And come on, Walmart crowd. Y'all need to amen that. You all heard me saying that. And you want to know? I thought... When I was saying that, I thought I was defending the gospel. These boys is trying to speak blindness on me. They're trying to speak old age on me. I ain't having that. <laughs> but what I was trying to do is not go to the doctor because Ruth didn't go to the doctor. And I came to tell you that you can't stand on the foundation of this work for Ruth. You've got to be a person that absolutely believes. What do you say about your life? And do you believe that when you say it, right. your words will come to pass? That's right. Oh, this is it's strong. It's good. But uh, what am I? What is the the theme of our Friday night services? Get accurate yes. in faith. Don't miss your faith targets. Don't shoot to the left. Don't shoot to the right. But get what you're aiming for. This faith stuff works. Yes, it does. Believe that those things which he saith. Do you believe what you're saying? If he believes those things which he saith, 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 you've got to believe them. Yes. And you look at it this way. If you ain't saying it, they ain't nothing for you to believe. That's exactly right. That's common in our churches. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you, oh yeah, Brother Todd, I know that's what God said. Yeah. He did. He said it. He said he wished above all things that you prosper, be in health. But now, Brother Todd, that ain't talking about money. And there'll be the same ones that tells you the money, Brother Todd, is the root of all evil. Come on. It's quoted. It's preached somewhere tonight. I came tonight to explain that to you. Money is not the root of all evil. My God did say that if you think God's got a problem with money, go look at the gate before you get into his city and tell me he has an issue with wealth. It's one pearl. That's right. Now, y'all don't look at that like I do. It would have been impressive if that gate had been made out of 10 million pearls. Right. That would have been impressive. But that gate's one pearl. Yeah. You know where my mind went? How big yeah. is the bodies of water that if one oyster can supply the gate right. to the New Jerusalem, I want to get my Miss Nitro in heaven on the, if there's oysters that big, there's large mouth bats on there. <laughs> 
supposed to love. Try. How many people owning a Miss Nitro would say, boy, I love my boat. Mm -hmm. Boy, God bless me, I love that truck he gave me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what you just did. You just committed the sin that's the root of all evil and, and there's every evil work attached to it. I don't love that truck. I don't love that boat. Love is a relationship with. The love of money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. It's the relationship you have with money or stuff. If you are saying you love your truck, that's perverted and that will stop your faith. God don't want you to love that truck. He told us, oh no man, anything but to love them. We're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. Husbands, you're supposed to love that wife like Jesus did the church. Yes. And I tell you, I struggle with that. Yeah. I do. I've been on a few dates with wonderful people. <laughs> and I'm sitting there waiting. Mm -hmm. I love her like he did the church. That's deep. How does he love the church? He died for them. He not only gave himself for them, yeah. but after he died for them, he put up with every stupid, yes. foolish, wrong a thing you've done. After he died, he put up with your foolishness and still adored you. Yes. Let me tell you, fellas, if you can't stand the way she chews food and it's irritating you at the start. <laughs> You're not going to be able to love her like God did the church. <laughs> exactly. Come on. <laughs> or maybe Jesus ain't loved you. With me, he's put up with some very stupid things. He loves me anyway. But you saying that you love your truck, that's a wrong relationship with trucks. That is what it, the, the root of all evil is the love of money. We don't owe man anything but to love him. The debt that you do owe is you love everybody. But pertaining to things, he said it this way, I richly enjoy all things. So you ask me, Brother Todd, do you love that boat? No. But I enjoy it richly. Yeah. I don't love it. That's perverted for somebody to love a boat. Come on. You want to know why the world's so messed up? Is we've got that backwards. Yes. We enjoy people and we love things. Yes. 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 Perverted. Yes. Come on. You're supposed to be enjoying them things and loving people. Faith works by love. I'm still on target. I don't want the church to go through what I did. It's a famous story around here, but somewhere between 1992 and 2001, I started preaching the message of faith just as loud, just as bold, and just as strong as I do now. 1993, I was preaching faith. 94, I was preaching faith. And I got a witness in the back of the truck, back of the church. Yeah. 
Daryl Wayne was in them bloody meat rooms with me in the 90s, and what was I preaching? The same stuff I am right now. I was in them meat rooms and coolers uh, preaching faith, and, and me and Daryl Wayne, well, he's, he's part of the crowd that the Holiness Church lied to and told us all encouraged maggots wants to do shout. Uh, me and Daryl Wayne was going around the churches uh, dancing and helicopter shouting and, and trying to outdo everybody. Yeah, this ain't just the Somerset crowd. I got one in the building tonight. I'm telling you, good and on their way. We are in a strict holiness church. I mean, strict. These are long sleeves, no TV. Strict! But they, they, unlike the Word of Faith camp, they know how to praise God. And they're up dancing. And our shirts are wet. We're not going to let them outrun us. We're not going to let them outdance us. Y'all might not can believe that from looking at him now, but the, the boy knows how to cut a rug. <laughs> am I off track there? You ain't off track. We outdid everybody. You ain't off track. <laughs> Come time for us to talk, and I am already preaching faith. I get up and talk about it. I probably preached whatever Brother Hagin message I've been listening to that week. And Daryl Wayne gets up and says, Somebody give me a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, the part you ain't getting, this wouldn't know. I've been in churches that called their stuff holiness, and me and Scotty and them laughed and said, They ain't holiness. Well, this denomination I'm in right now, when I first heard you all had the name Pentecostal Holiness, I thought, Ain't nothing holiness about that girl. <laughs> yeah. You don't know why? You all don't look like you all got off a wagon. You ain't holiness. <laughs> Well, back to my story. They will preach you in hell over the use of tobacco. Now, Darren Wayne, come out. Good thing about having he come out the same background. He went to them backer chewing over there in the Baptist churches growing up. I guarantee them fellas made you want you backer. Yes, you do. Well, it is me. I've been a connoisseur of it. I've, I've loved it in pipes. I've loved it in cigars. <laughs> I've loved it rolled in paper. I've rolled it in corn husks and, and smoked it. Really like chewing it. But we in that strict church, <laughs> if you wear a short sleeve shirt there, you're going to hell. This ring there is Babylonian garments and wedges of gold. And Daryl Wayne gets up and says, Somebody give me a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, there ain't nobody in this church folks. <laughs> Had to be one old sinner man in there on the back row. And got out of his big and give it to Daryl Wayne. And Daryl Wayne comes down through the aisles telling the holiness crowd that heaven is real. But I want you all to know tonight that, that hell is very hot. And he rolls up his sleeves and he takes that lighter and sets himself on fire. <laughs> Our praise was right. 
When they're dancing, you should dance with them to dance. You should cry with them to cry. But if we went in a crying church, we're going to dance anyway. <laughs> Come on. God loved us. Try. Right in our stupid. It was fun. That night, in that hole in the church, they delivered people having to turn their heads. It burned so bad. Now, I had been discussing doctrine with his mom and dad. They were a little bit afraid of him running around with me. <laughs> <laughs> they called me every so often. What do you believe in now? I'm going to take him home with a big war wound on his arm. And I'm really, really thinking now, what do they call it? How am I going to explain that? <laughs> God loves the church. That's right. And you're supposed to love like him. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's right. God speaks truth. You think when he said might be that he had the thought to, what if this don't work? No, God is not a man that he should lie. God believes his word so much that if he tells you your porch is going to turn into a nine-tailed monkey with a green stripe down its back, if he says that's what your front porch is, you no longer have a front porch. You have a nine-tailed monkey with a green stripe down its back. He gets what he says. Yes. He can't. It's not that God won't lie. He can't. The number one thing we as human beings think words was created for is a lie. Mm -hmm. We think they were created to communicate. Now, come on. Mm -hmm. You've been around a farm every bit at all. You know there's plenty of creatures that can't form words that can talk all day long. Mm -hmm. My little pup, he can't say a word. He'll tell you what he wants. Yes, right. Yes, yes they do. Come on. Words uh, came to tell you their number one purpose is not to communication. The purpose of, wor of words is creativity. He didn't give you words so I can say hi, brother, proper. He gave us words so that we can take the faith that he give us the measure of, the God kind of faith, and we can use those words in a creative fashion. Yes. There's a force in what you say. Reason you don't have more you don't talk more. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's right. That's right. You must believe that those things that you say, and in my case, it was not, I can't believe in those things that Ruth said. Mm -hmm. Oh, I liked hearing Ruth get up and preach about it. I have not been to the doctor in 53 years. Jesus has been my healer. Well, I thought I'm going to do that too. But you go in Ruth's house, healing verses is wrote on the wall. As she's ironing the clothes, she's speaking healing. Prosperity verses is wrote on the walls. As she's washing the dishes, she's talking about her prosperity. Yes. She's not telling anybody, the day I go to the doctor, you'll pack my hind in. No. She would not utter that. It, it's where I got the phrase. Anytime you went to Ruth and said, How you doing, Ruth? All is well. How are you today? All is well. 
And if you'd stand there long enough, she'd preach you the story. There's a little Shunammite woman that had a boy that looks like he had a heat stroke or something and died in the sun. And they laid him out and called for the prophet. And the prophet asked his mommy, how's it go? It's your house. And his mommy answered, all is well. Do you believe your words will come to pass? We're big on, boy, I believe that book. Is that book coming to pass in your life? There's a lot of people that will tell you, yeah, Brother Todd, I know that's what it says, but. Now, I know it's said a lot by other preachers. Ain't that interesting to me, but when, when his word says it and you say but, your butt's too big. I change that. Most of them creatures say you butts in the way, but I don't like doing that. I like to make everything original. If God says he wishes above all things that you prosper and that you are in health, but your big butt is too big. That's exactly right. Because you just made it bigger than his word. Uh-huh. Come on, sir. That's good. We're becoming accurate in faith. I want you conscious. You need a faith yes. buddy. Yes. We had those in the cabin. You know, we had Danny Ray, we had Scotty, we had Ronald, we had Samuel Brewer. Samuel's a big wheel funeral director now in Nashville, Tennessee, and his life. When we was kids, now I was always the oldest one in the crowd. I had boys wasn't young enough to drive running around with me, and you know, I could drive. But Samuel's playtime was weird. You know what Samuel played? Samuel played funeral. It made him look morbid to everybody. He'd get a wagon, put stuffed animals in it, drag it up the hillside and get his brother or his cousin Scotty to preach a funeral for them animals. With the, and he put on a suit and had a little cane. He, he's a little 19 year old boy out there playing like these is corpses and, and everybody's looking and thinking Samuel's morbid and, and Scotty's encouraging him. He preaches funerals over them bears. Samuel put a suit on and get at your kitchen table, get an ink pen, and play like he's writing out funeral form. Don't mind. Ah, the church judged it. Everybody in the church, they've done something wrong with this boy. He's playing over in the dark world. He's playing over in the Satan's world. But that's what I've always loved about Clyde and Ruth. Strict holiness. Ruth was Clyde with me. Clyde had you all fooled. <laughs> I was with him for 32 years. Clyde didn't believe that crap. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. I believed in love. That was a good combination. Yes. Clyde out loved everybody. Ruth out faithed everybody. Mm. But now Ruth believed in the holiness doctrine. Ruth slept in a dress. I don't mean no not special made for sleep. She slept in a dress because Jesus come. He's looking for a hole in the swamp. She not, he not going to catch her naked. Mm. But they had an ability. Ruth that strict had an ability to see good where other people couldn't see it. They believed in a little foul mouth stealing, cussing, lying boy in a meat room that turned into your pastor because they loved me when I was unlovable. And when Samuel's playing funeral, you know what Clyde's doing? He's putting back money to send that boy to Mortician's go. Amen. Everybody kept trying to tell him, Samuel, you got a voice, you need to be evangelizing, you need to be preaching. And he, he stayed true. Now he runs a big funeral home in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Got a house on the lake. Mm -hmm. 
Jim a home for my hats. And Sam, we figured, me and Scotty figured out what lake hat's on. He's been inviting us out, but one night ain't gonna do it. I gotta bring this nitro when I come. <laughs> what does that have to do anyway? God put that in Sam as a little boy. Yes. A lot of times what God puts in you, mm -hmm. if you've got one or two buddies that will agree with you over it, mm -hmm. you're rich. Yes. But everybody talked about Sam, but he had Scotty. He'd lay out Winnie the Pooh, and Scotty would say Winnie the Pooh was born on this date and went to heaven and glory on this date, and they'd have a funeral over that bear, and now he's doing it. You ain't talked to your dreams and your visions. I was preaching to D. Ray Reynolds with a hairbrush. Yes, yes. And you know what? With that hairbrush in my hand, you couldn't have told me right then that I wasn't in World Harvest Church in the camp meeting at Rod Parsley's or I'm at Rama and Brother Hagen just yeah. introduced me. Yeah. What was you doing? We weren't playing funeral, but we was playing. That's right. I come to tell the household of faith you need to learn to play. Absolutely. Play like you're there before you're there. Mm -hmm. Come on. Absolutely. We don't, we don't know how we're too serious. We don't know how to play. If it's your vision and it's your goal, I don't care how old you are, start playing like you're already doing it. Get up and dress like you're already doing it. Yeah. Because I want you to know that hairbrush graduated yeah. Darren started dating my cousin Missy and she informed us that Magic Mart had stereos that was called karaoke that had a microphone on them. <laughs> we pulled mine and Scotty's and Danny Ray's and Samuel's and Jonathan and Ronald's money together and we brought that big karaoke stereo home and now I wasn't preaching in no hairbrush. I was coming through the speaker systems at my house. Amen. <laughs> Play it, church. We don't dream anymore. Kids dream. We take the dreams away from them. I know, Samuel, you need to be out there playing with a basketball like the other little kids. You ain't normal. That's scary boy playing funeral home all the time. And now, Samuel, his shirt costs more than most of your vehicles because he played it and said it and said it. Come on. Yeah. Miss Nitro's in my yard, but more than that, my AC1 levels uh, that determine whether you are a diabetic or not, my levels when they poke my finger and check are a five. Every doctor has checked it. They said, son, we can't legally tell you that you don't have diabetes, but a five is a person below a pre-diabetic. Your blood levels show that you're not even a person that's about to get diabetes. Amen. Amen. You want to know how that happened? It did not happen on October the 15th, 2012. It started back in 1992 when I found out I'm healed. You can ask the people that work with me at Walmart. Yes. How about Phil? <laughs> I carried this in that store. Amen. And if they was on my group and on my shift, they heard. Yes. He was wounded for my transgressions. Yes. The, the sinners heard it bruised for my iniquities. The chast they can quote it. Amen. Amen. It stuck them in such a way, and this bunch can witness this part. We've had truck drivers come to our revival meetings in Somerset. Drive for Walmart. Brother Todd, I got something I need to tell you. Have we not had them come in? Yes. 
And the truck driver's testimony was, uh, when you was in the hospital, I delivered to your store. I come in that stock room and ask the first person I see, how's Brother Todd? He said, the whole stock room turned around and said, you know, if you know Todd, you know the only thing he's saying is he's healed and we ain't letting nobody, and there was some big sinner boys that don't know Jesus that was saying, and we not letting anybody in this stock room say anything else other than he's healed. Are you capable, sir, of saying he's healed? Amen. Amen. Did the drivers not come and tell us? Amen. See, praise, my desire for the clay hole worship ain't for here. I want it here. I want that kind of praise, but I want you doing it at home. Yeah. I want you so excited about God in your living room that you're up by your couch Amen. saying, Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I, I want you as wild as me and Daniel was in your kitchen, as wild as me and Daryl Wayne was in your bedroom. I want you leaping. Amen. See, we learn to do that in a bloody maker. Yeah. But I can tell you. One of the most powerful things I ever saw. Clyde's whole death. Powerful. Clyde outworked three or four of the young boys at Walmart. And the young boys will tell you he did. You have to send two down there with him. And at lunch, you better send two more because them two has been with him four hours. They done. <laughs> yeah, he wore out young boys. But his love allowed him to train them, but I'm off track. I come in Subway one morning. I was standing at the door. I said, what's up? His answer to me was profound. He said, Todd, I ain't never missed work. I showed up today. But you need to know. I am right now turning down the greatest opportunity I've ever had to be sick. I'm going home. Check on me after a while. Check on him after a while. They got him in the hospital. There's video footage of this on YouTube. Families gathered around him. We're all trying to figure out how to pray. Clyde's laying in a hospital bed. I've had whatever, 52, 53 wonderful years. I've been married to that beautiful, holiness woman over there. We walk with God. I preached his word so long. They tell him he's eat up with cancer. Your stomach's gone. Well, we're trying to figure out what through pray. This is her husband. He ain't going to do me no good to pray anything if I ain't going to What are we praying, Ruth? I'm not going to let cancer take Clyde out of here. And that got confusing. So I would go to Clyde, and Clyde had Diane make me his obituary. Clyde said, Todd, I finished my course. I did what God called me to do. I'm about to check out of here. And for those of you, it's the famous word amongst that crowd right now is Todd and Scotty ain't preaching the same Bible as Clyde and Ruth. I tell you why I ain't. Clyde looked me in the face. Said, Don't try to be me, Todd. Reach your generation with your message of faith. That's right. That's right. Ain't nobody going to stop me. If I don't have a church to do it in, I'll do it in a parking lot. I did it in Walmart successfully to where the stock room wouldn't speak doubt and unbelief. I had that stock room. If you went in it, you heard the old songs of Zion. All of sinner men standing there. 
singing with 99 and a half won't do. As they're, they're moving them pallets there. Oh, 99, the whole stock room and a half it won't do. And they look at each other. You've got to live right to, to reach a hundred. 99 and a half won't do. You are supposed to affect yes. those around you. Yes, absolutely. Clyde said, you know, I'm going home. Turning down the biggest opportunity I've ever had to be sick. He's planning an obituary, and Ruth is saying, I'm not going to let cancer take him out. Right. <laughs> the little one's under him's confused. Yeah. I'm all right. And I call Scotty, who are you agreeing with? He'd say, I don't know. Who are you agreeing with? And I, <laughs> I don't know. I, Ruth, I guess. But I said, Clyde want me to put this obituary on Facebook, do I? Am I going to offend the family? He said, no, put it on there. Beautiful obituary. He ain't dead yet. <laughs> he checked himself out of the hospital, though, and went home because he wanted to play with the grandkids and eat greasy cup. <laughs> Told me, though, reach my generation with my message my way. I said, Clyde, and I finally got his ear one time by myself. I said, I don't know what to believe. You saying you're done and going, and Ruth saying she ain't letting you go. He said, Todd, I'm going to go. And he liked to lay on the floor. I stayed in many a motel with him. He'd sleep in the floor the morning he went to bed. Why? He said, I'm praying. I'm in faith. He said, I've done my job. And he said, it's your and Scotty's turn now. He said, they're going to find me on the floor asleep and can't wake me up. I want you to know, about two days later, I get a hysterical call. I said, I know. Don't tell me. Is he in the floor? Yes. We can't wake him up. They get him to Jackson Hospital. They say his heart exploded. But as Ruth's going through the Jackson Hospital, the cancer doctor don't know they're, they're there. And, hey, Miss Gilbert, I need to talk to you. I've got Clyde's reports. And she says, uh, give them to me. They're about to fly him to Lexington on a helicopter. And the reports was, uh, no cancer. Cancer free. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and you want to know what Ruth started saying then? I got what I said. If he wants to go on now, he can go. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And you'll know what? He went. Yeah. Everybody stand. Amen. Lord. I did not do this message justice tonight. I, that's my that's introduction. Good. That's good. Everybody say this. I believe. I, I believe. believe. What I say. What, what I, I say, say comes to pass. Comes to pass. I believe. I believe. My words. My, my words have power. Have, have power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you're out there, hit like, hit Amen, so I know who's watching it. Videos are increasing again. We got one went over a thousand. That ain't happened in months. So share it, like it. If you want to sow to us, send me a message and I'll tell you how. But in either way, you out there, believe your words come to pass. Yes. Then you will have whatsoever you say. Amen. Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen.